All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week, we're going to do some custom work on the Wrecker. There's a custom harness that plugs into the trailer connector on the MFC so we can light up the lights in the top of the box. A metal spotlight bar kit, spotlights for the lower grill, an all singing, all dancing beacon light, plus we'll add a harness for the work lights. Now, I'm not sure how far we're going to get through all that in this video, but we'll at least get all the upgrades done on the top box. First, we need access to the inside of the box, so the cab has to go. Next, we need to remove the MFC control panel door and the front section of the body. And of course, we need to remove the other side too. Now we can unplug the beacon from the MFC, loosen the four screws holding the box to the chassis and lift it off. Right. Here we have the top box, much as we left it last time. To fit all the bits, we need to strip it back to parts. We need to loosen the screws that attach the front panel and remove it. Take out the four screws that attach the beacon and we can remove that too. Next, before we remove anything else, we need to mark where the back of the work light pods are on the box. A pencil works well as the hole in the back is quite small. Next, we can remove the pods, just a single screw on each side. Now we know where we need to drill, we can drill them out so the hole is just big enough to pass a 3mm LED through. Just a touch over 4mm usually does the trick, so the skirt around the bottom of the LED fits. We can use a larger drill bit to tidy up the holes and slightly bevel the edges too. When we're done, if you look very carefully, the holes will just about be visible, so they do need to look nice and neat. Here we have a simple harness for the work lights. It's common anode, so the anodes both connect to the red wire. Then we have two blue wires, one for each cathode. That means that when we hook them up, we'll be able to turn them on individually. To fit, we post the LEDs through the holes that we just made, then we fit the LED clips over the wires and push the LEDs down so the base of the LED is in the clip. Offer up the pods, then refit the screws. And that's about it really. We'll roll up the wires for now as we don't have anything to connect them to just yet. And in the future we are going to have a bit of a change of plan and change the wiring a bit. But the LEDs still fit in the same way. Next we have the upper tail lights. Now to fit them we'll need to remove the two LED clips with their screws so we can pop the LEDs in. For LEDs we have two yellows for indicators, each wired to their own pair of wires, and in the middle we have two red LEDs wired in series. At the other end there's a 2.5mm pitch JST that plugs into the trailer light connector on the MFC. The outputs are constant current, so there's no need for resistors, it's just a direct connection. Unfortunately, I lost track of the diagram I made of the pinout, but it is very simple. I'll see if I can draw up something and pop a link in the comments and or description. It might be a few days though before I remove the cab again. Looking at the manual, we want the indicators on the outside, which makes sense, and the tail lights in the middle. There's some nice lenses to fit too, however, if we look at the pictures on Tamiya's demo model, you can see the clear lenses want to be red, and the surrounds between the LEDs want painting body colour. So for now we'll just fit the LEDs and wait until after painting before we fit the lenses, just in case we make a bit of a mess. To install it's much the same as the others, we want to slide the clips over the wires and make sure the LEDs are sitting nice and flat. Offer the clips up to the mounts and refit the screws. Repeat on the other side and that's it, they're in. Next we have that super flashy beacon of finest Chinese quality. Actually, I do joke a bit. The plastic lid of the lens is a bit iffy, but the lights and electronics are top notch. The instructions are a bit Chinese too, but you can get enough from it to work out how to use it. Essentially, you hook it up to a servo channel with a three position switch. Center is normal, then if you flick it one way it'll change colour, and if you flick it the other way it'll change the animation pattern. Nothing to it really. We're going to mount it to the top of the box, so we're going to need to cut a hole for the servo lead. The easiest thing to do is unscrew the base and use the metal plate as a template. It's just two very short screws and the plate comes away. 
Now we can center it up on the top of the box. It doesn't matter if it's a bit off one way or another, and we can draw around the hole for the wiring. Then a quick Dremel, and we have a hole just big enough to pass the servo connector through. Now we reassemble the beacon, run the wire through, and pop it on the top of the box. Now the beacon does come with a pair of nice metal mounts, but they're a bit too wide for the space. So to make it easier, I'm just going to use a couple of small bits of servo tape. It'll be easy to peel up when we come to paint things, but it will hold things in place just fine. It's a little bit low profile. I think it's barely going to peek above the cab roof, but it does look very neat. Now, before we put things back together, we're going to need to tidy up the work light wires, just wrapping them up so they can tuck up out of the way. Then we reattach the front plate and nip up the three screws. Offer the box up to the top of the chassis and nip up its screws. Connect the beacon to a spare channel on the receiver and connect up the tail lights to the trailer connector. Then we're ready to test. Now, I'm not going to fit the rest of the cab just yet as we still need to fit the light bar. I've got the radio powered up and the battery connected to the truck. If we turn on the MFC, the beacon should get power and start doing something. Well, yep, it runs a test pattern, so that works. Now if we fire up the engine, which you won't hear as the speaker's not connected, we can try the upper tail lights. We've got the brake lights. And after a bit of thinking and trying to remember how to activate the indicators, we have indicators too. To play with the beacon, I've done a bit of an odd setup with the switches. The channel itself still works as three positions, but I've split it across two switches. The momentary switch changes the mode, each pull goes to the next step. Then if I flick the switch that enables the extra throw for the MFC functions, the momentary switch changes the colour. A bit convoluted, but it keeps all the functions in the same corner of the transmitter. The functions will end up with a dedicated set of buttons on a remote control, so I'm not too worried about how usable it is now, just as long as we can test the parts. For today, all that's left to do is to reattach the body panels and the doors. Next time, we'll work on the cab lights and refit. So that's the first bit of the customization complete. Just another 10 or 15 videos to go. All right, as always, thanks for watching. Like if you liked, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys.